In the last video, we started looking at types of phonological rules, and we focused on a very common type of rule, assimilation. In assimilation, you have a sound that starts to resemble other sounds in its vicinity. So for example, we had Italian nasals, where we had an alveolar N in contact with velar sounds. And so these velar sounds pulled the N backwards into the velar region. And this is probably so that you will have to do less effort when you're moving your tongue. So you don't have to move it from alveolar to velar, you just do both in the velar region. We also looked at English words like can't you, where an alveolar T was in contact with a palatal approximant. And this palatal approximant pulled the T upwards into a higher region of the mouth where the palatal lives. And so the tongue ends up in the post alveolar position closer to the sound and ends up sounding like a ch in cancha. So this is assimilation and it is just one type of phonological rules, rule. There's many others that are fairly common. For example, in dissimilation, you make two sounds more different. You make a sound more different than its neighbors. We have insertion and deletion, where you insert or delete a sound. We have lenition and fortition, where you make a sound softer or stronger. Softer generally means more airflow, for example, going from a stop to a fricative. So this is considered softer because in a fricative there's more air coming out. We also have metathesis, which is a process where two sounds switch places. So I'm going to show you a few examples of these types of phonological rules. Let's start with dissimilation. This is a process where a sound becomes less similar than the sounds in its vicinity. For example, in English, we have a suffix that is, that is al, as in anecdotal, annual, remedial. So the suffix has this form. However, there's a second form that it has as ar, whenever it is in contact with another L, as in angular, annular, and cellular. This process is called dissimilation because you essentially have two Ls in a row. You'd have angulol, and then you take the second L and make it something different so that precisely you wouldn't have the two Ls in a row. This is called dissimilation. And as you can see, it's fairly common in, in English and Spanish. We also have this process where if we have two L's or two R's in a row, one of them regularly changes. So let's look at another type of phonological rule. Let's look at an example of insertion. This is the rule looks fairly complex, so we'll go through it one step at a time. In English, we have words like prince, strength and hamster. However, these uh, words can also be pronounced prince, strength, hamster, with an extra stop in them. So as you can see, this process is inserting a stop into the words. For example, in prince, we have an N, as a matter of fact, an alveolar nasal, and we insert an alveolar stop the T. In strength, we have an, a velar nasal, and then we insert a velar consonant, a K. In hamster, we have a bilabial nasal, and we insert a bilabial stop, a P, hamster. So how does this rule work in English? We have the symbol, which means nothing, or we call it zero. So we have zero becoming a stop consonant. So we're going to insert a consonant whenever we have this context. We have one consonant that is nasal, and then here's where we would insert the new sound. And then after that, we have a consonant that is fricative and voiceless. So take a look at Prince. It ends with a voiceless fricative alveolar. Strength has a voiceless fricative 
intradental. And hamster has a voiceless fricative alveolar as well, the S. So whenever you have a nasal and a voiceless fricative coming together, English can insert a stop in between these two. What kind of stop? This is very important. Whatever kind of stop the nasal had, whatever, whatever place of articulation the nasal had. So this notation, the alpha, means whatever place the nasal has, the stop will also have. It means that these two features are supposed to match. So if we have a nasal that is alveolar, then the inserted stop will be alveolar as well. Or if we have a nasal that is bilabial, then the inserted stop will be bilabial as well. So this is what this means. It's zero becomes a stop with the same place of articulation as the nasal vowel that precedes it. And it will be inserted right in between that nasal and a voiceless fricative. This is, uh, it's a little bit complex because English has fairly complex rules, but as you can see, it's something that we do with the word strength. This is an example of insertion. Let's look at another example from English. English has a rule called G deletion, where you delete a, the phoneme G, so G becomes zero whenever you have G and then a consonant and then the edge of a word. So there are words that have G's in them, G's followed by a consonant, such as signature, des uh, designation, and paradigmatic. So this is GN, GN, and GM. So essentially G and a consonant. However, if we try to use the form of this word that is just a simple root, as in sign, we don't say zygon, the zygon, or, parad or paradigm. This G, which is the same one that we had here, gets deleted. Because if we only try to use this root, then we would have a situation where we have the G, and then a consonant, and then the edge of a word. And English has a rule for, this G's, for uh, these Gs to be deleted. So instead of zygon, we have sign. Instead of the zygon, we have design. This is an example of deletion. All right, lenition. Um, this is making a sound softer, so going into something that has more airflow, like going from stop to fricative, um, fricative to approximate, also going from voiceless to voiced, because voiced has a more uh, orderly airflow because of the vibration of the vocal cords. We had the Spanish rule where we went from the stop D to the fricative F whenever there was a vowel and a D, like in lal side. Um, asterisk, mine is so linited, so soft, that it actually becomes approximate. So you're going to hear approximates when I pronounce them. So this is lal. This rule can be generalized. As a matter of fact, you, we have lenition in Spanish whenever there's um, a consonant that is a voiced stop, like this bilabial stop and this velar stop. Both of them become a voiced fricative whenever there's a vowel before them. So this also happens with the bilabial in lao, I wash, which is written with a V, but it's actually a B. And it happens with lao, lake, which has a G, but it's pronounced with a fricative lao. So this rule is the lenition of a sound of the voice stops in Spanish. Fortition would be going the other way around, turning, taking a fricative and turning it into a stop, for example. Finally, we have metathesis. And this is a very common process, and English has a few words that have metathesized over time. So for example, Old English had the word breed, where the R and the I eventually switched places and became bird. We had the old word askian about 1200 years ago, and then the S and the K sound switched places. So that 900 years ago, so 300 years in the future from this one, we had the word axian. 
So this is the form that Beowulf used about 900 years ago. This is the form that Chaucer used about 700 years ago. Uh, and as a matter of fact, Cha uh, Chaucer did use axe, as in I axe, while the fifth man was not husband to the Samaritan. And yo, loveris, axe I now this question. Who hath the worship? Arcite or Palamon? So this axe was the standard form of that verb up until the 1600s, when it metathesized again, and it became our standard ask with the S first. But we still have X in many dialects. And these two sounds switch places every 500 years. So maybe in the future, the default form will be X again. So in summary, there's many uh, types of phonological rules. And these are just examples of some common types of rules. We have assimilations and dissimilations, where sounds become more and less similar than their neighbors. We have insertions and deletions, where you add and take sounds out. We have lenition, for example, where you go uh, into a sound with more airflow. And we have metathesis, where you uh, have two sounds switching places. In the next video, we'll go into the next level. We'll study syllables.